Listen, the vinyl hobby is expensive and it's easy to get really carried away. So how can you go about avoiding overspending? Well, I have a few ideas that I wanted to share. So in this video, it's going to be all about how you can save money in the vinyl hobby. Welcome back to the channel. Now, while we all love vinyl records and we really appreciate the relaxing ritual of collecting a vinyl record, throwing it on our turntable, dropping the stylus right into the groove, and chilling out while we listen to our favorite song. The fact of the matter is, the vinyl record hobby, like a lot of other things in life, is getting very expensive. So I wanted to zoom out a little bit and start thinking about a few ways in which we can all start saving a little bit more money in the vinyl hobby and not really falling too much into the FOMO trap. All right, so number one on my list is probably gonna be a little bit unexpected, a bit unusual given the name of this actual YouTube channel, but I'm gonna actually go with buy more digital albums, or at the very least, buy more digital albums, CDs if you want physical media, or even cassette tapes. Now, of course, we should all continue to support vinyl records. That is not changing anytime soon, but I think it's probably smart to start picking your shots a little bit better, being a little bit more selective when it comes to vinyl records, maybe not buying everything that comes across your desk, comes across your screen, and overall being a bit more discriminating when it comes to the records that you buy and bring into your collection. And while I think that's probably a little easier said than done, especially if you buy used vinyl records where you can get albums really, really cheap, perhaps even 99 cents depending on where you're buying them, the price really does start adding up when you're buying brand new vinyl records. Records that can be anywhere from $20 to $30 to $40 or $50. And then of course there are people that love vinyl record clubs, love vinyl record subscriptions, and those prices continue to rise and rise and rise. So I think that if we could start becoming a little bit more selective with what we buy, maybe just buying our favorite albums on vinyl instead of purchasing everything that we love on vinyl. And instead, when it comes to those lower echelon albums, the albums you like but you don't absolutely love or you don't have absolute strong nostalgia for, maybe those are the ones that you could just download digitally or purchase on CD or even cassette tape. Of course, you could also stream music as well via a monthly subscription through YouTube Music or Deezer or Spotify. But of course, that's gonna be another regular monthly expense and so you're really gonna have to figure out if the juice is really worth the squeeze there. Overall, I think that if you buy a little bit less than you did before, but when you do purchase, you make sure that the album has a really strong connection to you or you maybe like every single track on the album or maybe the album itself got the vinyl me please treatment and it is just tricked out to the nines and you just really know that that is the album that you need to have in your collection maybe everything else at least for now can be digital cd or cassette tape all right now number two on my list is something that i had actually already just mentioned in my previous number one discussion but it is going to be limiting or perhaps eliminating your subscriptions to vinyl record clubs and vinyl record subscriptions now, personally, I love vinyl record subscriptions like Vinyl Me Please and Vinyl Moon, and I actually did have a subscription several years back to Vinyl Me Please, and I actually came back to it uh, a few years later, fairly recently, I'd say within the past two years, to give it another shot. I think that vinyl record subscriptions are actually really, really nice, and they allow you to be able to listen to music that you otherwise wouldn't listen to on your own. Sometimes there's nothing better than seeing Vinyl Me Please really put in the time and effort to make an album that you love have a very, very special release. But the fact is, these subscriptions cost quite a bit of money. I remember when I did my Vinyl Me Please review several years ago, and <laughs> it was expensive then. And now, whenever I occasionally visit the website to kind of poke around and see albums that might be released, it kind of gives me a little bit of sticker shock. For example, I was poking around the site kind of just looking to see maybe what was new or what I had missed over the past few years for me being away from the service. And I saw that they had the games album, the documentary on vinyl. 
it looked really good. It was a double LP, came in red vinyl, which was pretty cool. And I thought this might be something I'd like to add to my collection because I love the album. Well, when I took a look at the price, it was at least $50 and certainly more once you factored in shipping. I was also interested in possibly buying this classic Whitney Houston album. I really like the color of the vinyl. I love the fact that it came with a book inside of it so you can kind of get a little bit more detail. It felt a little bit more premium, a little bit more special. But when I looked at the price, it was just, come on, man. And even if I wanted to give Vinyl Me Please a little bit of a benefit of the doubt, that they mastered this album to absolute perfection, and it sounded beautiful when you put it on your turntable. I know for a fact that albums in the 80s sounded really, really good on vinyl. And so I know that I could go to a local record store or Discogs or purchase anywhere online a used copy of this album, so long as it was in really good condition, save a lot of money, and have it sound excellent on my turntable. So while I still do love vinyl record subscriptions and I love the idea behind them in terms of saving money when it comes to the vinyl hobby, I think that canceling some of these services is a good idea. All right, so number three on my list when it comes to saving money in the vinyl record hobby is to start buying used albums. Now, there are some people that have always bought used albums, but I think there are also a lot of collectors that really do prefer brand new pristine records. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the fact is, if you're buying a brand new album, you're gonna be spending a lot of money compared to somebody that buys used records. Not only can you buy used records, especially older albums that are used records for under $5, there's almost always a 99 cent bin located somewhere in the record store, maybe somewhere in the back, where you can get really good albums at an excellent price. Now, to be fair, the 99 cent bin can be fraught with danger because sometimes there is a reason why the albums are so cheap. And that might be because of the album cover. Maybe it's tattered or it's falling apart entirely. Or it might be the condition of the actual record itself. Maybe it has a few scratches on it. Maybe it has some stains on it. Maybe it even has some speckling of mold on it. So you always have to be a little bit careful and mindful when you're buying used records. But sometimes a good deal is, well, just a good deal. And there's not a catch attached to it. Another thing I really like about buying used records is that you can always check the condition of the record before you buy it. So you can pull the record out of the sleeve, take a look at the record underneath light, see if there are scratches or any type of imperfections that you think might affect the sound quality of the record. And if it looks good, buy it. And the thing I really like about buying used records is that this method transfers online as well. I made a video years ago about the vinyl grading system and how even if you're buying records online and you can't see the condition of the record in person, you can use and go by the vinyl grading system to get a really good idea, a really accurate insight into the condition of the record that you're gonna be getting in the mail. So when I'm buying used records online on places like Discogs, for example, I make sure I not only buy from a reputable seller, but I also take a look at their vinyl grading. And I tend to like to buy albums that are rated very good plus or excellent or mint condition because then I'll know that the record is probably gonna be in really good condition and will be free from the pops and ticks and crackles that can really color the sound in a negative way. Now, another thing that's really good when you buy online, especially places like Discogs and even occasionally eBay, is that there is an incentive for you to buy more records and save money. So for example, let's say a seller is selling a used album for $5 and the shipping cost is also another $5. Well, that seller might incentivize you to buy more records and save money on shipping by saying something like, if you buy five albums, you'll be able to ship all five albums for $10. This way, you can not only get more records that you love, but you can save on the shipping cost as well. It's really a win-win. All right, so number four on my list is to be a little bit creative with where you buy your albums in an effort to save money. Now, I kind of let the cat out of the bag a little bit when I said that you can buy on eBay or you can buy on Discogs, but you can also buy albums in various other places. You can buy albums at online auction houses. You can buy albums at estate sales. You can buy albums at local yard sales. You can even buy albums at your local Goodwill. 
And on top of that, not only is this a pretty interesting and unique opportunity to get vinyl records on the cheap, it could be an opportunity to get vintage turntable equipment on the cheap as well. Once again, this is gonna be one of those things where you're really gonna to have to use your own discernment and really investigate the actual equipment that you're buying to make sure that you're getting a good deal on good quality equipment. There's no point in paying $10 on an amazing vintage turntable if it's broken and you're gonna to have to invest several hundred dollars just to fix it. And there really are deals to be had out there because people are always unloading their collection or maybe their family's collection that they inherited because they're trying to save space or cash out and get a little bit of money. In fact, it's amazing how many emails I get from people who watch my videos and think that I just wanna purchase their collections or their father's record collection or their grandfather's record collection. It's like, I appreciate the email, but no. All right, so next up on my list is to be patient and to wait for sales. Now, depending on what you're interested in or maybe what is gonna be released, you might find this to be difficult to do. Uh, maybe you fall into the trap of FOMO, but if you can wait and you can be patient and you can monitor the situation when it comes to vinyl record releases and you can wait for a sale, you will save a lot of money in the long run. All right, and the last thing on my list in terms of saving money on vinyl records and the overall vinyl hobby is to make trades with other record collectors. Now, whether you meet collectors face-to-face, -face, maybe on a record store day or some other type of meetup, or you just know people online, maybe in the Facebook community or on Reddit or somewhere else, it really could behoove you, especially when it comes to your pocketbooks, to make trades with collectors rather than trying to track down a white whale of a vinyl record. If you can make some bonds with certain record collectors and you also do your due diligence to make sure that the person that you're interacting with and you're trading with is reputable, is somebody that you can trust, then you might actually find that this is a good way to purge your vinyl records of albums that you no longer deeply care about while also acquiring ones that are coveted and on your list and all the while, saving a lot of money in the process. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, put the words big savings down in the comment section. So that's it guys, those are my ideas for how you can save money when it comes to the vinyl record hobby. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button down below. I always appreciate it when you do that. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well if you wanna be alerted whenever a new video drops. Once again, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. And as always, stay devoted to vinyl.